So the last few days, we've been working on addition and subtraction strategies and just doing the actual math part of that. And today we're gonna to take the next step and kind of move forward in looking at how can I use those skills to solve real world problems and questions that come up in word form. So is there anybody, um, sorry, I forgot. Before we do that, I'm gonna have you solve two problems just as a quick little warm up. Um, so if you have your whiteboards or a pencil and paper handy, we're gonna solve these two problems really quick. So we're gonna start with 687 minus 245. I'm gonna give you two minutes to work through that. So 687 minus 245. And then I'll have Miss um, And then I'll have Miss my name does does not start with a C. It starts with a K. Well, it starts with an E, but it ends with a K. Yeah, it's E R I K. Oh, okay. I am so sorry, Eric. I will fix that right now. I'm done. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I can name Thanks. you. Two minutes, and then once that's up, I'll let Miss Fleischer call on somebody to explain how they got their answer. And then we'll go to the next one. So two minutes on your mark, get set, go. When you finish, just keep your whiteboards down and maybe try using a different strategy on it. And then we can come back and you can kind of talk about how you solved it after that. I have two people that have no names listed. Let's see, so 861512 is Biani. So she, this is, she just got her hot spot. Yeah. So, so yeah, so she probably has not been able to do that. So that's Biani. And then Hoff is the other one. Which one? I don't see the other one. It was Hoff seven is usually Alex. I just know that. It says Alexander today though. No, but then there's one that there's no, like, um, who was this? Oh, Alex, okay. You guys have one minute left, one minute. Thirty seconds. Miss Fleischer is going to call on somebody to explain how they solved it. Miss Fleischer, Miss Fleischer, if nobody's volunteering, just go ahead and cold call on somebody because we got to oh, start. I can't we got wait. the same six or seven folks all the time. We're trying to Always bring ourselves happens. out of our shells. We have a lot of great brains in this classroom. They're just a little shy of sharing their thoughts. No, I can help you. All right, so if there's somebody who's able to share their answer and how they got it, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll let Mrs. Fleischer pick somebody to talk have, us through their solution. I have Corbin with his hand. He had the first hand up. All right, Corbin, Corbin. go ahead and ex explain to us how you solved that problem. Un uh, turn on, unmute yourself, Corbin. Um, I did standard algorithm and I did seven minus five equals two, eight minus four equals four, six minus two equals four, and I got 442. Great job, thank you, Corbin. So he did subtracting um, using the standard algorithm. It's fine if you use another strategy like the number line or adding up. We're gonna do one more and then we'll move on with today. So 347 plus 563, 347 I'm, plus 563, two minutes. My answer was, it's just, it, it's 442. I just, I just wrote my answer. Okay. okay, thank you, Eric. Eric. Go ahead and do the addition. Okay. okay, you're going to do the next one, friends. Just like last time, two minutes. And when you're done, just keep your whiteboards down. Try using a different strategy and see if you get the same answer a different way. Oh. 
um, One more minute. <clears throat> 30 seconds, y'all, and we're going to come back together and talk about your answer. All right, who would like to come back and share with us what they did to solve the problem? Um, Asil had her, not only did she have a real hand up, but she had the virtual hand up, double hands. So how about Asil? All right, so go ahead and talk us through step-by-step step what you did to solve it. Okay, so I, I, I added up, like first, I added up, three plus seven and I got 10. And then uh, t next, next I got 10 from six, six plus four, but I also added a one because, uh, because it's addition. And if you get like a number like 10 or bigger than 10, you add a one to the next one. And then I got 11 and then and then I added a one to the other one, and I got nine because five plus three is eight, and I just added one more. So, and I got, got 910. Okay, so Asil did the standard algorithm, right, where she added each place vertically. Did anybody do it a different way? Did anybody do it using a um, adding with place value? I see Eric's hand up in the corner of my screen. Eric, can you go ahead and share us how you did it? <coughs> Make sure you unmute yourself, Eric. So <coughs> I just did this because I just think that five hundred sixty-three plus four hundred three hundred four forty-seven equals one thousand. Okay, you're close, but like. We still got the right answer of 910. Is there anybody who did adding by place value who would be willing to share with us what they did step by step? So Eric, you're close. Take another look at it though. Going once. And so nobody added by place. Okay, well, I'm gonna share that just as a refresher. So adding by place will be if we took the 100 place and did 300 plus 500 equals 800. And then we did 40 plus 60 equals 100. And then we did 7 plus 3 equals 10. And then we added 0, all the 1's place, the 10's place, and the 100's place to get 910. I'm betting oh somebody, I bet somebody did it that way, and they're just too quiet to speak up. So moving forward today, we're going to be doing a lot of problems like those, but we're going to have to really work to understand a problem before we can do them. So our goal today, let's see, um, Michael, can you read our goal for today, please? Make sure you unmute yourself. Okay, maybe somebody else. Uh, Alex, can you read our goal for today? Our goal today is to be able to solve real world addition and subtraction problems using the strategies we, we've learned earlier this week. Awesome. Thank you. So you guys have already done the really hard part this week. You've learned the strategies and you're ready to move on and solve problems on your own. Today, we're just going to go over kind of those nitty gritty small details and learn how to look at a word problem and understand what it's asking us to do and how to solve it. So there's four steps. I'm going to walk you through them and show you how to do it. And then we're going to do one together before you go off to do your work today. 
All right, so I like to teach it in four steps. The first step is understand the problem. That's just reading the problem and really understanding what it's gonna ask me to do. All right, step two, I like to plan my solution. Think about what do I need to do to actually solve the problem? Step three, I like to actually go in and do that work to solve it. And step four, I like to justify my answer with units. So some of you guys have probably heard this is ups check or done it with little folders before. We're just gonna walk through those steps one at a time together first. Then we're gonna do it as a whole group, as a class walking through it together after that. And then you'll go off and do some on your own. So the first one is understand the problem. So that means I need to think about three things. I need to think about what's the important information in the problem. What is the problem asking me that I still need to figure out? And then <clears throat> what's information in there that's okay to ignore that's not important. So I'm going to read the problem once through, then go back and find the important information and, and talk about what I need to keep in mind when I solve it. So I'm looking at Jeremy drove 567 miles on the first day of his vacation. He drove 389 miles on the next day. It was 98 degrees when he got to the beach. How many miles did Jeremy drive altogether? So first I'm going to think about what do I need to figure out and what's the important part. So I see, and I'm going to underline, when you do a problem like this, you should highlight and underline things. But I see it's asking me how many, whoops, I need to click on my pen, sorry. It's asking me how many miles did Jeremy drive all together? So that's the, what do I need to figure out? I need to figure out how many miles he drove all together. So I need to go back and find out now what's important about that. Where are the numbers in the problem I need to use? He drove 300 or 567 on the first day and he drove 389 miles on the next day. And then there's one other number. It says it was 98 degrees when he got to the beach. This question's asking me about miles. So I know that that 98 degrees part, that's not important. It doesn't say anything about it. So I'm going to ignore that number completely. So I figured out what's important, what I need to figure out and what I need to ignore. Right, I've done all those three things. So I can move on to step two. Step two is planning on how to solve it. So now I know that I'm adding the two days of miles together. And I know that the only information that matters is the distance that was driven. I'm gonna to try to figure out the total distance driven. I'm ignoring those 98 degrees and all that. I'm just adding the two distances. So I'm gonna solve it. My plan is I'm gonna solve it using the strategy of adding by place. So now I know what I'm doing, I've got a plan. I'm gonna do step three and I'm gonna go ahead and do my work, all right? So I'm gonna add my 500 plus 300 to start and get 800. I'm gonna to move to the tens place and I have a six, so 60 and an eight, so 80. So do 60 plus 80 and get 140. And then I'm gonna add my ones. I have a seven in the ones place and a nine and I'm gonna get 16. And so I have my answer, six, five, and nine, 956 miles. So I solved the problem, I got the answer, and lastly, I'm gonna justify my answer with units. And I have a sentence stem that I'm gonna use, which is, so I gotta move my video out of the way for a second. When solving the problem, I got the answer of 956 miles, and I'm just not writing 956, 956 miles, because I need to say with units, answering with units, where it says in units right here, that means what am I measuring in? I'm measuring in miles. I got this answer by using the UC number. Adding, wow. Adding by place strategy. All right, and now I'm completely done. I figured out the answer, I've given it in units, and I've justified what I did to solve the problem. Now I'm, I'm, I finished, all right? So now we're gonna look at one together and we're gonna talk through the steps, all right? Together on one thing. So step one is understand the problem. Uh, Ms. Fleischer, can you pick a volunteer to read the problem for us? Just read the word problem at the top of the page. Alejandro. Go ahead, Alejandro, make sure you unmute yourself. Let's try one together. My, my book is three, 632 pages. I have, uh, I read 369 pages so far. How many pages do I have left to read? 
Okay, so we need to first go back and understand really what's important and what it's asking. So who can share with us what's something important or something that it's asking us to do in that problem? Just one thing. Anybody can pick one thing out, just raise your hand. Let us know what's one thing the problem's asking us to do or one thing that's important in the problem. Henry, what's something that's important or it's asking us to do in that problem? They're asking to do um, understanding the problem. Right, so I'm asking in that problem, what's something that's important that I should underline or circle that I'm gonna need to know when I go to solve it? Um, I have a bit of a problem. I need to go to the bathroom, but I need to wait. Okay. Um, somebody, I need somebody to step up. Somebody step up and tell me what's something in that problem that's going to be important when we try to solve it. There's Corbin. numbers in there and there's a question. Corbin. Corbin, what's something in there that's going to be important? Make sure you unmute yourself. Go ahead, Corbin. The number. Which number? The two numbers. Two numbers. Okay, so Mr. yeah. Mr. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Hoffman. This sto this story problem doesn't make sense. It, your book should be 369 pages and you've read 632 so far. What? It says my book is 632 pages. I have read 369 pages. Oh, I'm pages sorry. Before. I'm so sorry. I was like dyslexic for a second. Three, I was thinking that it said 362. Sorry. No, that's okay. I 600, 632. So I, I, I'm going to go. Corbin said with the numbers, right? So the book is 600. Uh-oh. Let me do that. Book is 632 pages is the first important thing, right? I know the total number of pages. And then it says I have, have read 369, right? So there's two pieces of information that are important. What is the question asking us to solve? CJ, what's it asking us to solve? What's the question it's asking us? How much do you have left? Yeah. Thank you. It's asking me how many pages do I have left, right? So now I've done that part. I've done the understand. Now I'm going to make a plan. If it's saying I know the total and I've already read some and it's asking how many are left, who can tell us what kind of problem this is? <coughs> what am I going to have to do to find the answer? Michael, what do I need to do to find the answer? Make a plan. Right. Well, what am I going to do? If I'm making my plan now. What do I need to do to solve it? So what kind of, what the question's asking me, how many pages do I have left to read? So what do I, what is my plan going to be? What do I need to do? CJ, go ahead. If it was me, I would use subtraction. Right. So I'm going to have to subtract, right? I'm going to have to do 600 and 32 minus 369, right? And then I need to pick a strategy. So somebody just throw out, anybody can unmute themselves and tell us what subtraction strategy do you want us to use when we solve it? Michael's hand I heard number line. So we'll do it on a number line. So we're gonna do the number line strategy. All right, so then I've done step two. Now I'm gonna go down to step three and I'm gonna solve the problem. So I'm gonna draw my number line. I'm gonna have to try to move my little thing, my document, my career list up to the top here real quick. Okay, so now I'm gonna start at 632 and I've gotta go back a little bit by little bit on jumps. What's the first jump I'm gonna make? Anybody can unmute themselves and tell me. In this problem, what's the first jump I'm going to make? 300. So I can go back 300. And that's going to put me at 332. Here's a tricky part. I have to go back 60 now. 
I'm definitely going to cross over hundreds. So to make that a little bit easier for myself, I'm going to do it by minus 30 to get to 332, or sorry, 302. If I've gone back 30 out of 60, who can tell me besides CJ, because he's been participating a lot, how many more I need to go back if I'm, gonna, if I'm supposed to go back 60 in the tens place? I've already gone back 30. How many more do I need to go back? Dunya has her hand up. Dunya, how many more do I need to go back? Maybe. Maybe we can come back to do you. Six, six hundred. Maybe we'll keep we'll keep going. We'll see. Yeah, I'm going back sixty, so I've gone back thirty. Jay, can you tell me if I've gone back thirty, how many more do I need to go back if I'm supposed to go back sixty in the tens place? Can people not hear me today? Because I feel like I'm calling on people and people are just ignoring me. Oh, Jay. we can hear you. Don't worry. Okay. Everyone can hear you. Jay, yeah. if, I, if I've already gone back 30, how many more do I need to go back to if I'm going back 60 altogether in this jump? You're muted, Jay. You need, um, I'm guessing 30. Yep. 30. I need to go back 30 more. Right, so now it's a little bit easier. Thank you, Jay. To go from 302 to go back 30, I, so I'm going to go 292, 82, 72. So 272. Then I just have my ones place left, which is 9, right? And so 72 minus 9 is 63. So 263 is my answer. Now, I go to my last part, justify my answer in units. So what are my units? What am I talking about here? It's so not miles. What is it, Cynthia? Miles. 263 what? What are we measuring in? It's not miles. What are we talking about this time? Pages. Pages. Very good. So 263 pages. And then I'm going to say I solved using a number line. It looks like a liar. Line. Okay. So your job today is going to be to do one on your, complete them on your own. So you have a problem solving assignment on Canvas. It's just like four problems. And then you're going to go on and do dream box afterwards. We have a lot of people with just one lesson this week. We're going to try to get more. I'm going to stop my share really quick and I'm going to talk to you guys about something. I have got to get more people paying attention not paying attention, but participating during these lessons, okay? A lot of you guys go on and do the work and you show you know how to do it, but I, we, you, we have to hear from more than the same three people, right? Mr. Hoffman, I think you should start drawing, like pulling sticks like you do in the classroom. Okay, because there's people who I think know this stuff, but they're just shy and they don't want to participate on camera. If y'all were here in face with me, I'd be standing right in front of you calling on people randomly. So I'm going to have to start doing it because I got to know that you guys are getting it or not getting it based on you on, in the videos, not just what you're doing on online work, okay? So your job today when you get off here, go to the math tab. There's a problem solving practice. You are doing all the problems. It's not pick or choose, all right? So you have to solve all the problem, all those story problems. And then when you're done with that, dream box, and then, I, um, then you can take your lunch break, okay? This afternoon, I'm doing office hours. Two o'clock, we're reading the chapters, same chapters as yesterday of the Tiger Rising. So if you missed it, chapters three and four yesterday, you can get back on, okay, and we'll do it today. If you already listened to them yesterday at two o'clock, you don't need to get on and listen to them again unless you really just want to listen to them because you like the chapters, okay? So no. office hours today at two o'clock, we're going to get on and we're going to read chapters three and four of the Tiger Rising and you can come listen, all right? Your job in math, type it in the chat box what you need to do, and then I will let you go when I see that you have told in the chat box what your job is after you log off. So type in the chat box and I'll give you clearance to go and get started.